Okay, uh, we start today with a, with a question that I'm glad this is our starting point, Mike. I think this is the perfect place to start because there was so much talk about the defense and Chubb playing well in Cincinnati, and we pointed out that Deshaun Watson clearly did not. But it needs to be pointed out that he's got a seven-game body of work now, and we haven't seen even close to the guy we thought we were getting. Is this finally the game where Deshaun Watson emerges as the legitimate, bona fide, elite quarterback we expected him to be? I think he has his best game as a Cleveland Brown this week. But I'm going to stop just short of saying he plays like an elite quarterback this week. I think he's going to play a good game. I think it's going to be way trending up from last week. Like I said, I think it will be his eighth best game uh, out of the eight games he's played so far. I have a hunch this game. I felt this way last week. I feel this way again this week. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game again. So I'm not expecting him to put up huge numbers statistically this week. I think it's coming. But I think it's going to be a defense first game Mm. and and end up being a little bit of a run-heavy game again. And so I expect him to be significantly better, be good. But I'm not expecting 350 yards and three touchdowns, no. The longer it takes for that game, yeah. the more questions we're going that's to have fair. and the more it's going to become a talking And that's point. the way it should be. Absolutely, it should be. But let's, let's just say that it is this game. Do you understand this is a nationally televised game? Mm-hmm. People are going to have no idea what to do with it, how to handle it, how to talk about it. If this is, if this is the game Deshaun Watson wins for the Browns. Because of his past Because problems. of everything that got us to this point. People nationally are going to have absolutely no idea what to do with it and how to talk about it. That's just fascinating to me. As someone in the media yeah. and someone who's like really in the fire here with it, with it being here in Cleveland, how much talk nationally do you people aren't going to know what to do with it. With your colleagues about that? Uh, when it comes up, it, it's, it's difficult for me to have the conversations because nobody wants to talk about it and nobody nationally wants to give him any sort of credit whether and there may be people locally who agree with that i'm guessing there's a lot of people locally who hate that people do not want to talk about him in a positive way how is that different from michael vick after he made his return it was interesting to me because as much as he was vilified and rightfully so for what he did it felt to me like there was sort of a canonization process when he came back. I've said this on the show many times. There's three things America loves to do. Build them up, tear them down, and welcome them back. Yeah. And that moment happened for Michael Vick. We saw it all. When he started to ball out again, the national media jumped on board. Michael Vick is now a member of the national media. I would have bet everything I own against that at one point. He what? went to prison. He did. He went to prison for what he did. And like women. So when does that happen for, for, for Deshaun Watson? Not yet. He's got to play well? Yeah, he's got to play well. He has to play well. I mean, and I think the big difference, not to interrupt you, no, finish that thought. Michael Vick showed a level of contrition. And I understand that Deshaun Watson has not because in his mind, why would I show contrition? I didn't do anything wrong. I get that. Will the American public get that? That's a good point because that is a big difference between the two of them. But, I mean, it's not just Vick. It's, it's Kobe. It's Ben Roethlisberger. Ray Lewis. The list goes on of guys who oh, you're right. have hit bottom – and somehow made it back to the top. Uh, I mean, Vic went to prison. That's something none of those other guys did. That's one major difference between them. But it, 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 the only reason I point this out is because this is a nationally televised game. This is the game. Mm. This is the game the entire country is going to be talking really about is Tuesday his return morning. for the rest of the country. Oh, it, it, because they haven't seen him. The NFL, by design, I believe by design, kept him far away from the spotlight. Yeah. Like, they could have put that Houston game on national television, and they didn't. They made it a 1 o'clock game, a regional kick. This is really his big return on the national stage. That, and depending yeah. on how he plays, this is he's going to be who everyone across the country is talking about Tuesday morning. I, I don't give a crap about any of that. I understand I, you don't. I, I got to tell I'm you. I'm just telling like, you it's coming. I don't care what those – I don't care if Kyle Brandt has a hard time talking about it on NFL Network. I don't care if some random talking head on ESPN <laughs> has a hard time talking about it. Right. You just gave the list of all those guys. We can all believe what – we've been through this a million times already over the last year and a half. You, it, as a person, can believe whatever you want about what happened between Deshaun Watson and these women. You could believe it all happened. You could believe none of it happened. The reality is probably somewhere in between, and you can believe whatever you want. However, what I would say is, here's the facts. The fact are, the fact is, he was never, he was never convicted. 
He never he went he went to court. The charges were thrown out. He was never charged. Boy. He was never charged. Well, he they tried to get a grand jury, but and that's they didn't not indict him. Right. That's, right. So, so he was never is, charged. And he and was never indicted. Saying? You can indict a ham sandwich. Right. You that's can indict right. anyone for anything, yeah. and they didn't He's get a, the he, lowest he, bar they needed to clear. They a, never cleared. A it. black man in the state of Texas who wanted the hell out. And they couldn't, and they couldn't even indict him. Exactly. So that's the facts. Yeah. Sure. And so I'm not going to worry about everybody clutching their pearls nationally. Now I know a lot of our fans get angry about that stuff, and okay, so be it. I didn't necessarily want to go down that rabbit yeah. hole again. I'm just saying, like, because it's the Monday night game, because right. it's they're the going to be forced to, and I love game. it. I hope Jason, he does. It's play it, great. It's an unavoidable fact. It's I going mean, to yeah. be talked. This about. This isn't the Cincinnati game, which was big but not national. There are two Monday night games, by the way. I know. Which is a little There's weird. One before, but the Browns the, game the is Browns on. The Browns game is the second one, and that's the big one. Can, can, that's the, the Browns one game is on ABC. Audience. The other one's oh, on ESPN. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Can we uh, listen? Can we stop? You know these people. If you got a problem with it, you're phony and you fake. I'm just keep telling you. I know somebody that's under nine investigations in a RICO charge, and he get to run for president. So you stop playing. I don't know how to talk about Deshaun Watson this football. Not only does he get to run right now, he's the front runner. He's the front runner. So until that level of uh, hypocrisy in this country for somebody who didn't get indicted for anything. By the way, that guy was uh, actually he just lost a five million dollar lawsuit because of and not his first and not his first. Yeah. So so if, it is selective outrage. So if and this is the highest level in the world. So if people want to act like Monday Night Football. I don't know how to say. It. Yes, you do. We know what you can do. You could be a professional and talk about what's on the field. You could be a professional and say, did he throw a good ball or a bad ball? Or are the Cleveland Browns going to win or are they not going to win? And for everybody else that's the national media, well, the national media is really getting dismantled now anyway. I mean, ESPN is no longer here. I mean, they just keep, Barstool keeps just downgrading. So here's the reason. There's a lot of you that parrot this stuff on national TV and you've been rewarded for it. Now, people are like, I don't need cable. I watch blogs. I'll watch this person over here. I'll watch that. The reality of the situation is there's a lot of people that's upset because of one thing. They perceive the fact that he, in their mind, is guilty of these, these crimes that they've made up in their mind. And he's rich. He's going to be rich forever. That sucks for some people. There was always a very fine line between admiration and hate. And Deshaun Watson has slowly creeped on the hate side. No one likes to say it. Players make more money than you ever make. They'll make more money than everybody. And there was a, always a segment of the population who love sports, but don't love what it gave somebody else. And that is, I got generational money. And to be truthful, it doesn't matter what Kurt, what, what Aikman or, or, or Gus Johnson or whoever says, yeah. you're an announcer, I'm yeah. good. Well, the reality is most of the former players that are national guys, they don't they don't, they're not going to have a hard time talking about Watson. They don't care about any of that. They care about what's on the field. Well, they care about storylines. They, they do care yeah, about storylines. And, and the storyline for the last 18 months or whatever it was before he came back was, let's beat up Deshaun Watson. I am predicting right here, right now, yes, this is his breakout game. And I'll tell you why in a second. And I'm also going to tell you that this is going to be the pivot point from where the national media switches their collective narrative mm. because it's such an echo chamber. It's coming. It is such an echo chamber in true. that world. Yeah. I lived it. I saw it firsthand. You know it. It's mm -hmm. an echo chamber. One guy says it, 50 parrot it. This is going to be the turning point. He is going to ball out Monday night. He is going to lead the Browns to a decisive Monday night victory over their rival that they just have a miserable history against. And that will be the pivot point where the national media decides, okay, we took our pound of flesh, we're good, now we're going to support them. Because they love a winner. They're, they're very, very duplicitous when it comes to stuff like that. I believe that as much as they love to pile on and it became sort of this mob mentality, they were all ganging up on them, that was the easy thing to do. It's obviously the right thing to do. Everybody's saying it, I'm going to say it too. Let me bring it full circle. We named somebody, I said, okay, we get somebody ran for office and won, right? The reason that person has that cliche is because he won the election. He, sure. The first time he won. No one thought he would win. No one. Everybody said you're crazy. He won. That's where he gets the cache from. So, yes, at some point in time, you could be hated on, whatever the case may be. But if you start winning games... That's what we love more than anything. By the end of the season, if the Browns are really good and have a chance to make a playoff run, 
then yeah, the story will be, look at this. The Browns have been a disaster for decades. They haven't won anything. This guy. And he's going to be stuff, the guy in the white hat. And he'll be the guy. And look at him. He's redeemed himself. The team's redeemed That's itself. It. Here we go. That storyline will turn around. Me personally, I don't care what any of the talking heads have to say nationally. It doesn't affect how I feel or, or, or whatever. But some people get worked up by that. I wanna, but I wanna, G hasn't answered the question yet whether he thinks Watson's going to have the bust out well, game. Well, well listen, I, I do have, you could go on uh, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. The barbershop is up. I was a day ahead of you guys without the topic. Why Deshaun Watson is destined for a jaw-dropping performance on Monday Night Football. You we got, agree. You go check that out right now. It's just slick, shameless Well, plug. give, our, give our viewers watching now that don't have the time to go see it. Uh, well, well, see, why? The, because I, I kind of foreshadowed this yesterday. Deshaun Watson wanted to play well the first game. He, the, 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 the weather and everything got to him. We didn't give him no passes for it. Joe Burrow played terrible too. But I think on a Monday night, he senses the opportunity and he understands this is my time to really show and answer, answer all the critics. It's only me. It's Monday night. I said he should be with his receivers all week, stay extra, watching film work and say, listen, we won that game last game because of our defense in a running game. Mm -hmm. we, didn't pull, we didn't pull our weight. To, they gonna know that we should be a problem too. We are a complete team. I think Deshaun Watson goes out and he's gonna exercise his ability. You're gonna say that is the Watson we've been waiting to see. Well, you, when you're looking at the comparison there, there is no comparison. The guy that we've seen in an orange helmet has been nowhere near the guy we saw in a blue helmet. I'm gonna double down on what you said, and I've got a lot of reasons for it. First, we know him to be a gamer. He has not played a meaningful NFL game. Am I right? He played Wait, a playoff game. He was in the playoffs. What what happened? Well, that's a playoff game is a meaningful game. It's a meaningful game, but it's not. I'm talking like national championship, AFC championship game, NFC championship game. The B Baker Mayfield won a meaningful game, but we dismissed that right out of hand. That didn't count. It was one game, and he in that game he played well. But he's I go played back more to his, than one playoff game. He's, he's how won what's three his playoff play record? He's played three playoff games. Three. He's, he's one and two, two in the playoffs. Okay, yeah. not good. Not not going to write home about no, that. No, but he you can't say he hasn't played a meaningful game. I, if you ask the average fan around the country, what big game has Deshaun Watson played in? You know what they're going to say? Oh, he won the national championship when he was at Clemson. That's the biggest game he's ever played in. And I don't think that's even disputable. What, what that's fine. But, what you're trying to so say what is I'm AFC is, championship to you is either AFC championship or Super Bowl. It's a semifinal game. Yeah, it's yeah. a semifinal game. Like, show me... Show me that Jay, you can't say a playoff game is not a big game. It's I don't not. understand. It's, I mean, look, the what first round, not? the first round, he's played in a first round playoff game. Baker Mayfield won a first round playoff he, game at Bull. You have been taking a crap on that for two years. He, I, but I didn't say, I never said it wasn't a big game. Okay, big game. I'm talking, yeah. you know what I mean by big game. The Bengals have played in a big game recently. Yes. The Browns, when was the last big game the Browns played in? The if you mean the AFC Championship. See, okay, it was the biggest game they've played in. Yeah. But was it a big game? I, really thought, I think it's every big playoff game is a big game. I think every playoff game is a big game. It's a wild card game. I All mean, right. call it what you want. Yeah. It, 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 here's a big game. Here's how I define a big game. Yeah. Is it the only game that's on at that time? Because they don't Yeah, cross. playoff games are only games on at that time. Not the, not the wild card round. Yes, it is. There's other games that day, right? No. It's oh, not. that day yeah, there is, is yeah, another there game. Is. There's like, what is there on wild card weekend? Six games? It, they never overlap. They're they all, don't no, overlap. I know they don't overlap. Of course not. But I'm saying... If you're playing in an NFC or an AFC championship game, you got the spotlight. Everybody's watching. That's all there is on. That's it. That's all you have. They if you're in the, the Super AFC Bowl, and NFC championship game on the same day. Okay, so. look, we can split hairs over that all day long. I don't but call that a big game. But you keep giving examples, no. and, you, and they're not good examples. Here's my example. <laughs> yeah. I don't view that as a big game. I don't. So you think, I'm not here. I'm, you think and, and, this and, game is bigger than, than playoff I'm gonna, games? I'm going to tell you That's why. That's crazy, Jay. I'm going to tell you why. It's not a standalone game, though. No, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> it is a standalone no, game. No, it's not. There's, There's another game tonight. Games. Not against it. Yes, there is. It's there not there. on at the same time. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> they're, they're both scheduled for 8 o'clock kicks. They're I thought one was 7.30 and 8.30. 8 8 8 okay. All right. <laughs> I'm still going to make my case for why it's the biggest game. <laughs> Other than the Clemson game. The Clemson game was the biggest in the championship game. The biggest game he ever played. I, if you ask fans, not in Cleveland and not in, in, in Houston, what's yeah. the biggest game Deshaun Watson's ever played in? What are they going to say? I, I, I'll be it, honest here. What are they going to say? I, I What's mean, the biggest game he's ever played in? This I, is not a lot of A lot of fans in big cities don't watch college football. Well, this is not a it. hard question. What's the Jay, biggest you're game? Saying, you're saying the second game of a regular season is bigger than a playoff game, and you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Listen. Nobody I'm agrees with you, you here. You're out of your mind biggest, right now. I'm going to tell you why it's <laughs> the biggest game he's played in the NFL. That's insane. 
the meaningless playoff games that he played in as a he Houston played Texans, in, in the AFC divisional round against Mahomes. Was his reputation on the line in those games? Because rep- it is now. No, it's not. Let me give you some numbers. Let me give you some numbers. You're gonna you, hate these. You've numbers. given me about ten things. I've cor- I've f- corrected you every time. And you in keep your going mind, up the next you thing. have bull. <laughs> Jay, this nobody is agree- bull. There's nobody on the planet that agrees with you right well, now. You can't disagree with my opinion. <laughs> you can't. It's my opinion. You can't change my. That mind. a random Monday night football game is in bigger the last than a playoff game. Seven games. Yeah. Our franchise quarterback, who's getting more money guaranteed than anybody is averaging 179 passing yards. Yeah, we're aware. We all he's know the stats. He's eight touchdowns, six interceptions, and a 57% completion right. rate. Right. So, he, so he's done if he doesn't play well. Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. in his last seven games, has averaged 174 yards, thrown for six touchdowns, five interceptions, completing 63% yeah, of his they passes. They both suck. I get it. Our new guy yeah. has become your poster child for awful quarterback. Nobody's saying Deshaun's so played well. With you. So now, now to the next stage of my point. Yeah, this is the biggest game Deshaun Watson has played as an NFL quarterback. Not even close. Because it's not even close. The, to be the whole country game. is watching, yeah. and he needs his elite quarterback credentials renewed. If he that doesn't, doesn't make play, any if sense, if he doesn't play well and they lose. Is the season over? Of course not. Okay, then it's not the biggest game. But, however, (laughs) I'm not talking about for the team. I'm talking about for Deshaun Watson. All of us. And yesterday, it was everybody that we had on the show yesterday. And it's everybody that we've talked to, really, going back since the end of last season. Have all said the same thing. Huh. This, this isn't what we bought. Totally agree. This is not the guy. Totally agree. And now he has a chance, guys. This is why I think he's going to ball out. He knows that every eyeball in the country is on him. He has the opportunity to change minds all at once with one huge performance. And I'm not talking the numbers that he's put up so far. These aren't pedestrian numbers, guys. These are They're awful terrible. numbers. Not, but nothing you said back your argument that this is his biggest game ever. My argument is he's going to have a great game. He that may. was the topic. He may. He's going to have a great game. And the layer two to that was because it's such a huge game for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I don't and think And we it's can that. argue whether it's yeah. the biggest game for him as a pro no, or not. No, there's no argument because there's no way you is can it, possibly make that let argument. Let me ask it you this. Make any sense. Is it top five biggest games he's no. ever played? Probably no. not. No. Why it's not? Week, it's week two. It's week, it's week two. two, but it's coming off seven weeks of Baker Mayfield numbers. No, I understand. And he could be trash Monday night and still have a wonderful year. That's the point I was trying to make yes. about you always of take the win. You, can. you always take the win and a bad performance from the quarterback because there's 16 more to go. When now there's next 16 nationally more to go. televised game? Do you know? Week 17 against the Jets, okay. which could be flexed now because I, Aaron Rodgers. So that's, being a nationally televised game doesn't bull mean anymore you know that it's different when you're on national television and you're in that spotlight you know everybody watches it's a big i, night. I understand that it's a but, big but night. everybody watches every play P- who's watching but people more? don't watch games people watch playoff games more than they watch monday night football in week two actually that's not true it's not no the monday night football rating is higher than, than, the wild card, than the wild card divisional numbers. Yes, you can look that up. Right, well, Watson I, is one and one on Monday Night Football in his career, by the way. He's thrown five touchdowns and one interception. Did, did you say on the morning call this morning you gave a number for Tomlin's record on Tomlin's Monday? Tomlin's 19 and three on they Monday Night Football. They played 22 times on Monday Night Football in his tenure. The Steelers are 20 and 0 in their last 20 home Monday Night Football games, by the way. Well, if you I, want to be I concerned, right that, there's why. Really? I, so I found some That's a great numbers stat. that concerned me. I didn't find that one. That's, their last, their repeat last, that number. They're 20 and 0 in home Monday night football games. Their last loss, and I'm pulling up the stat right now, was wow. 1991. I wasn't born yet. Wait a minute. That's impossible. Oh, oh, you're saying home. Okay. Okay. They're 20 and 0 in the last 20 Monday night football home games. And so typically, typically, not always, but typically those Monday night games are competitive. They're, they're putting them in that slot because they're big games. Now, I know that they're calling them big games before the schedule comes out so they don't know who's going to become what. And most of those games are with Roethlisberger. The stat to me is impressive, but not really that meaningful. Wow, I don't impressive. I don't find it that meaningful. Uh, I, I, I hate the stat. It's beyond it's, impressive. It's, it's yeah. just like saying the Bush family men, naming his son and, and his father, have worked a combined 75 years in the workforce. Right, right, right. No, yeah. my father has worked most of those years, and I'm just starting. So yeah, but the Tomlin number, he, he earned that. that. Hey, 
Hey, sure, that and but that was mostly that's, Roethlisberger. That's what, what was that number again? That's 20, what Roethlisberger. 19 and three. How many of them? How many of them when they got Pickett and Trubisky? Uh, see, I not many. Look, see how I mean, that works. Well, I mean, pick has been there yeah. one year. See, see how it works. He didn't even start a whole year. But, but that's yeah. it. This is not the this same. Is not, that's what we're saying. We this said that last year, year, and they still finished ahead of the Browns. We say hey. that every year, and they hey. finish ahead of the but Browns. But guess what? You got what's, your, uh, what's your stomach churning stat? What? They 1989. Steelers finished ahead of the Browns every year since 1989. Well, we're going to see what it is this year. Yeah. I tried I remembering that. I was trying to tell it to somebody, and I couldn't remember it. I said, I, you know what? I'm going to screw the stat up. It's just that they finished below the Steelers since whenever and yeah. I thought it was the early 90s but you say 89, 89. that's almost impossible to it's do. almost impossible <laughs> there's only four teams in the we, division we could talk about it all we want all these stats favor the Steelers obviously because they've been a much better franchise most of that's irrelevant when it comes to this year gee I got your stat by the way what's yeah. his record with Pickett and Trubisky yeah three and oh okay oops never mind just three they, beat? Cool. they beat in 2021 God, this they guy. beat Tom. the Bears and the Browns, and in 2022. Well, those I mean, and they're not great teams. They beat the it. Indianapolis Colts. So they beat three bad teams. Congratulations yeah. at home. But they're still three and up. I mean, <laughs> now, still, you know what? This. They still do. The Browns have lost to a lot of now, bad now, teams. Here, now here's what I want to say. Yeah, the Bra- and the Browns still got tons to prove too. I'm not like the yes. rest of the fans anointing uh, the Browns if, right if, now. No, but you can't ignore the past. If, right. if you, if you, here's what I want. You can't have it both ways. Either you gonna crown somebody for everything they've done in their past, or if the Browns beat them and smoke them on the road, we better not be hearing all that wait four more games noise. No, we smoked you yesterday. Don't t- go back five years and tell me what Tomlin did. We talk about on the field now. Either it count right now or it don't. People trying to act like these games are still preseason. We've been hearing preseason don't count. Preseason don't count. Now all of a sudden it's creeping towards the, the regular season don't count. And the first round of the playoffs don't count. I'm looking at like what AFC championship is the only thing we moving with. Also, yeah. guys, I know that you I, want, I'm with you. You, uh, you want to ridicule me for saying that this is the biggest game in, in, in his professional career. Yeah. I, I'll also make one more statement that you can try to swing a bat at. And I know you will. I think they get bigger with every week until he shows us that he's Deshaun Watson again. Well, I would agree that this game is bigger now because he didn't play well last week. It's bigger than last week's game. And next week's every will be week, bigger if he does it again. Every week's game gets bigger as, as it becomes the next game. Yeah. But just until the idea that, pull, until the idea that it's bigger than a playoff game to me is crazy. Playoff game, you lose the season's over. A wild card if, playoff game. We gave Baker Mayfield nothing for that. We gave him no credit oh, for oh, that. Oh, I gave, okay. him, I gave you him did. You're right. major credit you for did, that. You did, and I did too. Major but credit. as time has gone on, my point here is, as time has gone on, we flippantly talk about that like it didn't happen. No, I think he got full credit for it in the moment. In he, the moment. He sucked he did. afterwards. He did. In so the, you okay. can't live on that for so, forever. You can't live on that for multiple years. You just helped make my point. You just helped make my no. point. No. Because he sucked for th- after that forever. Yeah. And really has done nothing. I mean, I know his numbers are the same. It was still his biggest as, game. It, it, it was. His two playoff games were the biggest games it of his was, career. It was, but at some point, and Baker's further along this pendulum, I think, than Deshaun. Baker's on his last chance. Yeah. If Baker flames out in Tampa, the edge from the Heisman and the number one overall pick, next, that is gone. Next stop is big noon kickoff. I've said it for you two years. You are kidding. I thought he'd be there this year. I really <laughs> did. There was, a, there was a point when I thought no one's going to give him a shot. Now, because this is his fourth team in basically 18 months, this is it. So I think these games are even more important for Baker Mayfield. He has got to prove that a team is okay investing in him on a more than a one-year contract. But for Deshaun, what's interesting to me about Deshaun is he had something that Baker did not. He had a substantial body of work before the decline. Mm-hmm. A substantial body of work. Baker's had moments here and there, but even in his, uh, his playoff season, there were moments where I was shaking my head saying, I don't think he's the guy. Yeah. I don't think he's the guy. Then he stands up. He had a game last year. I didn't even realize this because it was the Rams and no one was paying attention. He completed 24 out of 28 passes in like the second or third to last game last year. We know what he did in his first game with the Rams last year on two days in the, in the organization. He went out in prime time and balled out, played right. one of the best games of his Jay, life. Jay, we're going on, on a tangent no, here on Baker. I, I just what, don't see what the point what is. What you're not seeing is what yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to enlighten you, but your mind is too closed. I'm trying to enlighten you on this fact. 
Right now, these two guys are in a very similar place. They're not even close to being careers. in a similar place. I just gave you their last the, seven Jay, games. Deshaun Watson played at a Hall of Fame level before that. Baker right. was just a guy. And what There's is the no NFL? comparison. What is the Baker NFL? has no contract beyond this year. Deshaun's got so, a five-year deal at multiple millions of dollars. So Carson Wentz, once upon a time, was great, too. Where Carson is he now? Wentz was great for one and a half years. Where is he Deshaun now? Deshaun was great every moment he was in Houston. Was he? He's, yes. When yes, almost season, every game. In his best season. Yeah. What was their record? They had a bad record. No, what was it? It was 4-12. and 12. Okay. Here's, here's what I, you know. Jay, it's not a great oh, season. He oh, no. played great. It's not a great season. He played great. I would, Go back and look at his first Jay, quarter passing you're numbers You're out of in your mind games. right now to no. say, you can't say it's a bigger game Bull. than playoff games. I, I, I can, don't, but you can that's disagree. That's crazy. Can we, Everybody in the planet disagrees. Can we give, can we oh, give some really? context? Of can course. Context well, you here. must be right there. Just, just a little yes, context. Yes, I, 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 I was talking to Bill Simmons, and he asked me what's the deal with, with the Browns and Deshaun Watson, and I told him, and this is a microcosm of what you see in the community. You can't talk about Deshaun Watson without talking about Baker Mayfield. Because Baker Mayfield was such connected a, at the hip forever. Because he was such a popular person, and, and a lot of people, including myself, thought he was the guy. When we, when, when you, when he found, we found out that he had some warts and was not the guy, and we, they got rid of him. That was a huge, major blow to everybody and a lot of Baker supporters because they had so much invested in him. So when you get the next guy, Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson has to now not only play well, he has to erase all of the doubt, 100%. all of the anguish from a side of the Nobody population. Nobody disagrees with that. From a side of the correct. population. Yeah. Who, who well, that's really, why I talk about who, him together. Who has never gotten over Baker Mayfield. Yep. There's a lot of people ain't over Baker Mayfield. I know. And they're, and they're not going to be over him until, until Deshaun uh, plays great. And, until they want to see but him But to say they're right. on the same plane right but now I agree no with that. They're, that's well, crazy. Bull, Bull, the only reason I say they're on the same plane is yeah. if I put their numbers side by side, over the last seven games, I they're identical. I get it. They so both, they are the same guy right now on the field. They have you, they have been for seven games. Okay? Correct. Baker has a longer track record of bad play. Deshaun has a track record of great play. Baker has no track record of great play. Wait a minute. We have one or two wait, games wait, 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 here and now, there. Now, wait a minute. So, what? so his playoff season yeah. and playoff win does not count as great play, even he though when great. Deshaun Watson was 4-12, and 12, he was great. Yes. Come on, it, Bull. That's insane. Is that even debatable? It is absolutely debatable. If you're so, it's put only based on the record of the games, team. No, bull. You're going to put everything on playoff games and the importance of them. Yes. I can look at a quarterback that that compiled a lot of numbers. Yeah. In a four and twelve season. Right. When the defense in the second half of most of those games were saying, "Take your pick." I, I don't we're, think we're that's true. But all right. Defense. Bull, you know it's true. I don't think it's. I actually don't when think it's true. When a team is four and twelve. And a quarterback balls out. Yeah, but you just you, you don't have numbers that's to back great that up. Play, but when Baker goes eleven and five and wins a playoff game, that's not great play. No, he didn't play at a Hall of Fame level. I'm not saying Hall of Fame. We're yeah, but Deshaun Watson played at a Hall of Fame level in his three full seasons in Houston. He played, I don't know. I don't know that I agree with that. Oh, okay, played I, at an All Pro level. Yeah, Is that because better? I think one of the, played, one of the, Baker never played at an All Pro level. One of the prerequisites ever. for the Hall of Fame is well, how many rings do you have? Like, you know that's true. Well, Dan Marino's in the Hall of Fame. A lot of guys are in the Hall of Fame that don't have them. But what I'm saying is, you're going to say he played three seasons that were Hall of Fame. Okay, so who's who's a better better quarterback, Dan Marino or Eli Manning? Dan Marino. Not even close. One one guy's got two Super Bowl rings, the other's got none. The other one also has two Super Bowl MVPs. And that can't be ignored. Fine. You You can look at it how you want. Individually, there's no comparison. Beyond the fact that they both played crap football for the last seven weeks. I'll give you that. Well, but that's and the it. reason that's important to me, Bull, is yeah. because the NFL more than... I remember when Jerry Glanville famously said the NFL stands for not for long. And that, you know, that was 30 years ago when he said it. And I thought to myself when I heard it the first time, man, that's true. That is really true. But that's more true now than ever before. 